Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for over 40 years. I'm going through the text again this year, asking Jesus to clarify for me, and then I write from that clarity. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're reading from A Course in Miracles, Chapter 11, Section 4, The Inheritance of God's Son. And we're going to read Paragraph 6 today. <clears throat> paragraph 6 tells us, Christ is at God's altar, waiting to welcome his Son, but come holy without condemnation. For otherwise, you will believe that the door is barred and you cannot enter. The door is not barred and it's impossible that you cannot enter the place where God would have you be. But love yourself with the love of Christ, for so does your Father love you. What a thought. I'm just going to read that sentence again. But love yourself with the love of Christ, for so does your Father love you. You can refuse to enter, but you cannot bar the door that Christ holds open. Come unto me who holds it open for you. For while I live, it cannot be shut, and I live forever. God is my life and yours, and nothing is denied by God to his son. Well, I cried when I read this. Brother Jesus is holding the door open for us, and this invitation is open for as long as we need it to be. My heart is filled with gratitude for him and for God, who would deny me nothing. I cannot enter, though it is held open for me, if I come with condemnation in my heart. I noticed that it took a long time for me to lose a desire to condemn others, but even longer to stop condemning myself. So here's a quote by Muji that felt very important to me. He said, once you surrendered yourself, then you should not be worried about any of these things. If you have surrendered yourself to the supreme existence, then you are not to take excessive care of yourself anymore. Otherwise, you're not really surrendered. Either this thing about surrendering is a joke, it's just in the mind and we're playing games, or it's true. If you surrender, you surrender, you know? There can't be surrendering and still waiting to see if it works or it doesn't work. Then these thoughts don't have a landing place. If they come, you say, take it up with the boss, okay? I don't deal with it anymore. It's not my business anymore. I've handed myself in. <laughs> I love the way Muji says this with humor and certainty. Take it up to the boss. I've turned myself in. I'd been trying this idea of surrendering my ego completely and had moved in that direction so that I knew that surrender is a peaceful, happy state. But I don't stay there. So when I read what Muji had to say about it, I knew surrender was right and what I wanted. Keeping any aspect of the ego keeps me from knowing my true self and my creator. But then a thought surfaced and I felt fear. I remember standing in front of the mirror one day and thinking that I had gained more weight recently than I had in a very long time. At that moment, I felt panicked and all I wanted was to lose some weight. I also felt conflicted because I was not comfortable with the old way of doing so. I felt afraid because I didn't want to go back to the old story of the body being in charge of my life. And I just had to find a way to control it within the story, the right diet, the right exercise. On the other hand, I was not completely convinced that I wanted to surrender this obsession with the body. I didn't know if I could trust God with this. How interested is he going to be in fashion and the image I present to others? Not at all, right? <laughs> And it doesn't help that Muji is kind of a chubby guy himself, proof that God doesn't read GQ and Cosmopolitan. This is a problem. So bear with me. I was trying to work this out in my mind and could only do so if I was completely honest about my thoughts. I felt real fear at the idea that I could turn over everything, completely surrender. On the other hand, I also felt really shallow and a bit embarrassed that the sticking point was my body image. 
But I had to go there because that is where the ego grabbed my attention. So it must have been true for me at that time. I was also aware that I was receiving guidance about what I eat and being guided away from heavy foods and lots of meat. I had no idea why this mattered, but then there were many things I didn't know. So no surprise there. Later, I was just to discover the purpose of that guidance. But I also knew that I, <clears throat> I asked that my mind be healed about this business of the body and food. I wanted to be free of my lifelong obsession with food and how it affects my body. Especially, I wanted to be free of the insane belief that my mind had nothing to do with it. Since then, nothing I had used to control the body image in the past worked the way it had before. And while that was good, it was also frightening to someone still attached to body image. I could not see myself returning to peace without full surrender. Reading this paragraph is the reason I suddenly began to remember all this. It reminded me of how it felt when I condemned myself. I felt guilty for my body image concerns and not for following clear guidance. This felt wrong. And then other non-surrendered thoughts came into my mind as the ego convinced me that the body, body image was just the tip of the iceberg. It's a silly notion I can laugh at even while guarding it against God. There are other more serious ways in which I defend against God and the ego mind points them out so that I will know that it is useless for me to try to enter the door. I'm too guilty. I'm condemned and it will take me an untold amount of time to earn the right to enter that door. I feel so sad and so discouraged when I listen to that thought. But I'm not alone in my mind with the ego. I share I am with God. I share God's thoughts. Some of them were rising up in my mind at my invitation. I saw that I didn't have to undo each thought of separation. I didn't have to meet every thought that I am the separate self in control of life with a desire to surrender. In fact, I only need to decide on surrender. And all the thoughts of separation will cease to be meaningful. Thank you for that thought, God. Everything was dark for a moment, and now the sun has come behind the clouds and it's light again. I am more certain than ever right now that I surrender this life to God, and if I slip back into separate self-decisions, I'm not going to condemn myself for it. I will just take Muji's words as my own. When they come, I will say, take it up with the boss, okay? I don't deal with it anymore. It's not my business anymore. I've handed myself in. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me in this uh, reading. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, then please like it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I'll be back soon with another reading. See you then.